Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, I'm so excited that you are here with me tonight um, to talk about lesson planning, to talk about elementary music, to talk about procedures and getting back to school and all the things that um, are, are going to take us hopefully through the school year. Um, I'm excited to share another year, another season of these videos with you, um, and I hope that they're helpful. So along the way, I want to get a couple housekeeping things out of the way because I know I'm going to mention things along the way and people are probably going to ask, what about this? What did you mean about this? What a so let me talk through a couple things. Um, every week when I talk about lessons or resources or books or anything else in these videos, I always try and share the links to those things um, on a page on my blog. So my blog is makemomentsmatter.org um, and you can find all of the resources and things I link on a links page. You just go to makemomentsmatter.org and click the, the video tab or there's a link at the bottom of Facebook Live. There's also a link at the um, my link and profile on Instagram Live so you can go and just see all those links so you're not like researching them, trying to find them. They're linked there if you want them. If you can't find that page, send me a message. I'll try and help you out. Um, also, if you uh, want to watch this video later, you're like, I can't watch it all now. I want to watch it later. It's going to be archived on Facebook. It's going to be archived on Instagram. It's going to be archived on YouTube. So like if your school blocks out um, Facebook, you can always check it out on YouTube. I'm also going to take the sound from this uh, video and put it into a podcast so you can listen to that later. Um, and then one more thing, uh, I have a Facebook group. Um, it's called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Um, and if you search for that, um, I hope that that's a really great resource. I hope that if you have questions or thoughts along the way that you'll be able to post there and get really good answers. I know um, sometimes we have these questions like, maybe I should know the answer to this already, but um, maybe you don't or maybe something new comes up and you want to ask a question. So um, I hope that Facebook group is a great place to get answers and, and feel like you're part of a community, ask questions so that you know you can um, get a response from someone out there. So if you want to find that, that's on Facebook. Um, Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. Look us up, join the group. I hope you will. Okay, a couple more quick housekeeping things. First, um, if you like seeing me through your phone slash computer slash, I don't know, however you're watching this, uh, cool. But I am going to be doing some in-person workshops coming up. Um, it's like back to doing that, which feels a little crazy, but is exciting. Um, I'm going to be um, in the greater Chicago area with the greater Chicago um, area ORF chapter on September 18th. Um, I'm going to be at the St. Louis ORF chapter on September 25th. I'm in Milwaukee with the uh, Greater Milwaukee chapter of ORF chapter on October 2nd, and then in Kansas City with the Heart of America ORF chapter on October 9th. So I would love if you would come and, um, and see me in person, come to a workshop, um, join one of those communities if you're nearby, and I hope that those communities are, are a great resource for you. I think ORF chapters are just, uh, and Kodai chapters and local music head chapters are the best way to connect with people and uh, feel like you're a part of the community and um, just learn more, learn better, and, and connect better with people. So I hope that you'll come out and join us if you're in one of those places. If you want to hear about more workshops coming out this year or you want to check out details, if you go to makemomentsmatter.org and click the About Me tab, it has a link with all the workshops I'm doing this year um, online or virtual or in person or what have you. So um, I'm going to uh, let you go there if you want details. If I see some people are saying, are they going to be online and live? All the ones I mentioned are all live. I don't think they're also virtual, but if you go to the that page on my blog and click through to your, that local chapter you're interested in, they'll be able to tell you whether you, they are also broadcasting live. I don't remember all those details at the moment. Okay, one more thing before I get going. So um, if you're like, huh, things look different in this video. If you've watched any of these before and you're like, hmm, things look different. Uh, yeah, a couple <laughs> things are different. If you've never watched before, this is the way it's always been. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so I uh, moved into a new house. My partner and I bought a house this summer, our first house. So we're really excited about that. So the backdrop's a little bit different. Um, but also, um, I'm trying something new this year. Um, I have this fancy, fancy lapel mic on, and I like bought an actual camera for my computer, so I'm not just doing this all from my phone. Um, and so if you're like, things look slash sound a little different, yeah, I, and if they're better, great. <laughs> if they're not better or 
uh, worse, please let me know. But I'm trying to just up my game a little bit so that um, the quality of these videos is a little better. You can hear me a little better and maybe I can um, control it a little better too. Okay. All the housekeeping out of the way. Um, I'm able to see lots of your great comments. So if you have questions and comments along the way, cool. I'd love to try and um, answer those as best I can. I'm going to try and leave a little time at the end of the video tonight to do that for sure. Um, but I want to jump in and talk about um, a new year. There are a lot of, uh, I mean, I, I love thinking about coming into this school year because coming into last school year, I didn't feel like in 20. 20, what, what year? So in 2020, I didn't feel like I had a summer because I felt like the whole summer was like worrying about like, what are we going to do? Are we going to wear masks? Are we not going to wear masks? Are they going to be in person? Are they going to be hybrid? Are they going to change things? And then things changed all the time and everything was different. At least now I feel like I've had a year of doing this and I know what the expectations of the district are, I, I think. <laughs> and um, I, know, like, I know where this is going. So I feel a lot different coming into this school year. Um, and in things have changed a little bit in my school and things have changed as far as restrictions and, um, how we're doing things. We know more so we can do better. And so, um, so things are just a little bit different. Um, also my schedule has changed. So last year I was seeing one class every day for like five days in a row and then not for four weeks. And then in the second half of the year, it sort of changed. Anyway, I'm back to like a, a normal schedule for what the building used to do, which means that I see kids every week, twice a week for 30 minutes. And I switch with the PE teacher. And uh, it, I'm sure many of you have a similar schedule where you like flip flop with the PE teacher and um, you have shorter classes. That's what I'm doing. Um, and so it, it feels very different. The pacing is so different. So you're going to hear a little bit of that. Um, and my lessons are going to feel a little different if you're used to hearing my lessons in the past. Um, but it's just where we're at, you know, and so things are just a little different. So before I started, I wanted to talk about a couple tech things that I learned to love last year and that have been really, really helpful that maybe could be helpful for you too. Um, and also um, a new bulletin board I'm really excited about that has been so great in my, my school and has received a lot of great um, uh, feedback from parents. And so I wanted to share that with you too, in case you're looking for like, what am I going to do for my back to school bulletin board slash advocacy any anytime bulletin board anyway so um let me talk about some tech things first first of all i don't know what i would do without my clicker and i know a lot of you have like a clicker it's just this little um there are a lot of different versions of this none of them are very expensive you can buy the expensive ones but i don't find that they're much better than the cheapy ones this one looks like an e-cigarette i'm realizing now that i'm holding it up i've never used an e-cigarette i just know i've seen them so anyway this one looks weird most of them are like sort of the uh bit clunkier they're clunkier this one looks sort of like a pencil shape the reason i like this one um you can click back and forward on your slides you can black out the slide you can change applications you've got a little laser pointer most clickers have that the one thing that i really love about this is it has a volume button so i can from wherever i am in the room if i'm playing a video or whatever, I can um, change the volume up or down. And that has been super helpful. Not many of the clickers have that. And this one does. Um, and I have used it over and over for the last year. I've taken it um, on the road when I do workshops and things like that. It's super great. Also, it fits in your pocket really well. I don't have a pocket on this shirt, but it fits in my pant pocket really well. It, it's nice. It's a great clicker. I like it. It just connects through USB here on the back. You pull out the little thing and you click it in your computer and bam, you've got it. The clicker is great. The one that I have, this one I think is like $12. I linked it on the links page if you're interested in looking at this exact one, but there are a lot of versions. The thing I find with clickers is some company makes them and a lot of companies like buy a bunch of them and put them online with their name on it. Um, and so this one says... K-N-O-R-V-A-Y. That's the brand. But I've seen this exact shape with other names on it. So if you find one that's like $10, it may be the exact same thing, just a little cheaper. I don't know. But the, the link, the one I found, um, it I put it on the links page in, your, in, case, in case you're interested in this specific one because you know that it has worked for me. Um, and, and it does. I love the volume button. Okay. Let's see. Clicker's one thing. My microphone is another thing that I I have always advocated for. I always think that music teachers should have um, some sort of microphone to amplify their voice. 
pre-pandemic, during pandemic, I don't think that matters. I think you should always have one because it, it and, and, and we're self-conscious about it the first couple times we wear it. But now with more teachers wearing them and now with COVID, I, I feel like it's, it's just so necessary, especially if you're masked because it's your, your voice is already muffled. So I think it's super important. Um, I want to show you the mic system that I have that I really like. And then I want to show you a specific headset that I really like too. Um, so the, the, the one that I bought several years ago that I always tell people about because it I feel is like the most versatile um, is this one. It's Fifine, 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 I don't know the brand. I, I linked it so you can go look and not try and worry about me pronouncing it correctly. Um, but I, I love it because um, it plugs right in to any system you already have through an auxiliary port. So this is the little receiver and it can go right into a soundboard if you have a soundboard in your room or um, uh, whatever aux quarter inch cable jack this is. It also, ha well, I think I, it might have come with the adapter, but I might have bought the adapter for the headphone jack. Um, it works really, really well. The signal's super clear. And then you wear a little belt pack um, and, and then you have a, a microphone you can click in. Now it came with this little uh, Britney Spears, Madonna, whatever diva you want on channel headset that I don't remember how to wear. It, it's, it's supposed to like, okay, it's supposed, it's supposed to go over your ears and behind your ears like this. I've never worn it like that. I always like put it around my neck so that it angles up. So then it's like not on my head, but still gets to right where it needs to. So it gets the sound. I like that. Um, it also comes with a little lavalier mic thing. So you can clip it on like the fancy one I'm wearing today. Um, so I, I particularly like this one. It's always worked really well for me. It's been super dependable. I've taken it when I've done it like Orb Chapter workshops or things nearby. So I really like it. It does suck the batteries. So I'll tell you that. Um, one of the things I bought with it was I bought online, there's a, um, a rechargeable battery thing, like a, a, a charger that comes with four triple A's and four double A's. And this system uses like two double A's in one pack and three and two double A's in the other. So if you buy this with it, um, you can, it's like you can use two of the double and two of the triple, and then the other f two of each can charge while you're using, does that make sense? Like you can use some and then you can charge them. This has been super, super handy. Um, again, you don't have to use my brand. You don't have to use the one that I'm looking at. I'm just telling you, this is one that's worked for me and it's been really helpful and I, I like it. Um, the, I have another option at school, another, um, another pack that like hooks in specifically to my system. Um, and so this uh, uh, microphone I wanted to show you, I think is really cool. The reason I like this microphone, it's super, super thin. And the cool thing is that um, this microphone goes under my mask. It fits under my mask um, and it, it works pretty well. It catches my voice really easily. It's right down by my mouth and then and it's so thin that I don't feel like I am being exposed because there's something, you know, hurting the seal of my mask. I don't feel that at all. I also don't feel it. And it's right there. It amplifies my voice really well. I used to take the like lavalier clip, the like the, the lapel clip thing and clip it onto the end of my mask. And that worked. But this one is so much clearer because it goes right on my mask. It's super, super thin. Um, you just got to be careful if you're buying these because some of them come with like a headphone jack and some of them come with um, this like microphone pack jack. So you got to know, you have to know what system it is you're using to know if you're getting the mic that will actually work on your work on your system. I hope that makes sense. But I think that this super, super thin one is great because um, it gets right on my mask. It's easy for me to use. It's easy. It clicks in and it is not uncomfortable. Okay. See, I see a couple questions from folks about the mics. I want to talk, um, catch those really quick before I move on and forget because I will probably forget. Have I had issues with the batteries? Yes, but that's why I bought the rechargeable pack. Totally worth it. Um, is the Fi Fine one sort of expensive? No, it's like 40 bucks, which is why like I originally bought it myself and didn't have my school buy it. Um, and so I didn't feel bad about buying because I knew I was going to reuse it for other things. Um, it also wasn't, I mean, 40 bucks is not cheap, but like it's, um, compared to some other things out there you can get, it's, 
pretty inexpensive. Um, voice amplifiers are nice when you want to get your class quiet all at once. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but also it definitely saves your voice. It's great if you're singing. Um, it, it's, I feel like it's totally worth it. And which voice amplifier microphone did you purchase? The one I was just showing, I have had that one um, for several years. Um, there's another one that was like already built into my school system. So I didn't bring that one <laughs> to show you because it's like, I can't like rip it out of the wall. But it's like um, a different sort of a system. But um, the thin mic I bought myself and I linked that on the links page too. That's separate from the mic system. That was like $10. And again, you can buy whatever you're most comfortable with, but I think the thin part is like super, super worth it because it goes into your mask. Speaking of masks, so my sister um, is an amateur seamstress sewer. I don't know what the word would be. I guess maybe a little both, but she made me these masks a year ago. I think you've probably maybe seen these um, as I've shown them like on Instagram and Facebook and stuff. Um, they are, are a little weird. <laughs> they look sort of like a feed bag, like a horse's feed bag, because it, it fits like over your mouth. It's weird, see? But anyway, <laughs> the reason I like them is they sort of pop off of my face. Some of the masks that you can get, get really close to your face. Um, and that's, I don't like it, because it's like in my mouth, harder for me to sing, speak, do things. Uh, one of the things I bought, um, even with these masks that, that sort of don't uh, collapse on your face, I bought these little masks that when I put on, it's going to look like Hannibal Lecter, sorry, but it's a little, um, like, um, I don't even know what you'd call it, like an insert that you, keeps the mask off of your face. Um, and it, it does, it, it's a little weird at first because if the plastic part is actually touching your face, it does, it feels like plastic on your face. You can get all, there are all different kinds that are thinner or thicker or less or more obtrusive. Um, I linked a set on the links page if you're interested. I just, I like it because it keeps the mask off of my face. Uh, the, the microphone can then go right underneath it in between this and my face. So it makes, um, it makes the whole mask wearing thing a little bit more comfortable, um, even if there is like plastic touching my face. I, I get used to it. I'm also a glasses wearer half of the time. So I'm like used to f feeling something on my face. And it, it, after a while, again, if you're doing this for hours and hours, it doesn't, um, doesn't feel weird after a little while of wearing it. 3D mask insert. Thank you, Jennifer, for coming up with a word that I just could not think of in my head. Um, and then, okay, so my, I've also shown this before, but my sister, so she made these like pop-out masks, right? There's, they're, uh, she, she made, they're four layers. They're really great. They're super durable. She like read all these studies about which mask the best. So she, I'm so thankful for her. She also made my nephew one um, that was super cool because they're sort of a weird sort of a popped out shape that looks a lot like a turtle shell. So she made me this turtle shell mask that um, I sometimes wear, even though it <laughs> looks like there's a turtle in my face. I love it and kids really like it. So anyway, I just thought I'd show those off. Um, you can't buy these on Etsy or anything. I mean, I'm, maybe you could, but um, my sister's not selling them, but you can make your own. But anyway, the mask inserts are totally worth it um, and, and totally great. And remember that links page is on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. Um, and you can just click the, the video page and then find Musical Monday's recap for this year. Or if you're on um, Instagram or Facebook, it's at the bottom of the caption for this video. Because I saw somebody asking about that. Um, where, where are you finding these links? Okay, one more thing that um, I think is super valuable, um, and I can't really show it because it's an it's an app. Um, so uh, on your iPad, I know I've talked before in these videos in previous years about an app called iDocio, which is spelled I-D-O-C-E-O. -E it's a really great app. The reason I love it is because um, you can load all your classes on with first and last names and teacher names and all sorts of things. It catalogs all of that it it'll make seating charts for you it's really super helpful with grading because it um it helps to keep kids uh like if, if you have like three brian's in a class which has happened to me before it knows which brian and you can like if you take a picture of the student you can click on their face and click on them as you're assessing or as you're doing attendance or whatever and it'll pull over to the grade book like oh that's brian r not brian f or brian j or whatever um, it's a super great app i bought it when i was like seven dollars um, like years ago, it's never gone up in price. There's not a subscription for it. Um, oh, sorry. It's never like tried to make me pay again. That's what I meant. Sorry. Um, it's, I think now it's like $11 or $12, but it's so worth it. So many teachers I'm sure have already talked about this. You've probably heard of it before. 
If not, check it out. Go to YouTube, like look up iDokio teacher and you'll get a really cool video about like how it works and why you want to do that. Um, but I, it, like a better description than what I'm giving you now. But I'll just say like, I'm using it. I love it. Um, you should go check it out. That's one of my other tech things I think is great. Okay. And then one more thing that's just not a tech thing. I'm trying it this year. Um, so I, I've always wanted to wear a different kind of shoe in my classroom. Um, so that I can um, move a little bit easier. Um, like wearing street shoes is great and wearing tennis shoes is great, but I want something, cause I'm, I'm ORF trained, um, I'm taught, and in that training they train you to um, focus on expressive movement and try, and I just find that like in my street shoes, I'm not as agile, I'm not as, I, I can't move as quite as easily. Um, and so I bought some, uh, they're not really dance shoes. They're water shoes. These are like <laughs> for going in a lake. But um, the the cool thing is they have a really they're really comfortable. They feel like wearing socks. Um, the bottom does have some tread. Um, it doesn't have a lot of support, but I think that you could put an insert into it if you really wanted that. Um, but I just love it because I feel so much lighter on my feet. I feel like I can move around really fast. Um, they were only $12. Um, I already feel like I'm moving more or if I'm sitting crisscross applesauce or whatever with kids, I don't feel like my shoes are clunky or getting in the way or cutting into my leg or whatever. So I, I'm trying it. I've not done it before. I know you can get like yoga shoes. You can get um, dance shoes. There are a lot of cool options. I actually posted about it on my Facebook page a couple days ago and people have given great options, but I'm trying these out. They were 12 whole dollars. So I'll report back on if I love them or if I hate them. I've worn them now for a full week plus and they haven't fallen apart. So, you know, I feel like that's a good start, but we'll <laughs> see how it goes through the rest of the year. Okay. A couple quick pet questions. Um, the district doesn't allow you to bulk import but it's worth the time to put in the names. Cool. Some people do think it's a little time consuming. Um, you can put names in Excel and type it out on your computer and import it into the, the app. Um, you can get a little wireless keyboard and input it into an app. It's not made for Android. It's only available through um, Apple. And I think only, maybe it's an iPad only app. I'm not exactly sure, but I, I love it. It's worth at least checking into and seeing if it's right for you. It's a really cool app. It's, it's especially nice, I think, for me if I'm assessing in the moment because I can assess students really quickly and it pulls everything over to the grade book. Um, it's really nice, again, because I have so many classes. It pulls up seating charts with student faces on it and I just love it. I think it's a really great app. So um, worth checking out, worth seeing if it would work for you. Okay, one more thing and we're going to hit lesson plans. This bulletin board, it's a brand new one. Um, I just put it up in my hallway and I put pictures on Instagram and Facebook, I think. Um, but it's all about like what we do in the classroom and I just wanted to share it. So um, the first, uh, well, there are a bunch of posters um, and they talk about all the things we do in our class. So, uh, so it just says like, sing, I can sing by myself or with others. And then play, I can play so many different instruments. Compose, I can compose new songs and perform them. So it's all the things that like we do in our classroom anyway. Um, it's just bright and simple and um, the kids love looking at the clip art. My principal loves looking at the statements um, and it's just really easy to put up on the wall. Um, there's this really cool clip art set I found that has um, all these different kids um, and in, you know, just lots of different situations playing guitar, playing xylophone, playing recorder, playing drums, whatever. And it's just, it's really cool to, to have that out up on the wall and for kids to see all of well, to see themselves in the clip art, to see themselves doing what we're doing in class. Um, and it's really sort of based on the national standards. So you could use it this time of year. You could use it any time of year for advocacy. It could be music in our schools month. Um, and I, so I just sent them out and I just, um, just put them off the wall. And I've already had several parents comment and uh, my administrator mentioned it too. So um, it's out there if you're interested and you want to sort of um, have another tool for your advocacy kit. And I put a link to that on the links page. I also have a page you can print out that just says music class is more than just singing or playing instruments. It's like for the adults who walk by, you know, like to give them a little bit more um, context about like what, why this bulletin board is out on the wall and what, you know, what it is that we're actually doing in class. Um, and I did have somebody ask if it can be printed in black and white. So I made a black and white version that you could print out really easily onto like colored cardstock if you don't want to eat up um, your color printer or if you don't have access to a color printer, you can get colored paper and print right on. So that's another thing that's out there if you want. Um, and I link that on the links page. Okay. 
let's talk about some lessons. I love back to school lessons. I, I always think that I'm going to hate them. I'm going to get sick of them, but I just really love them. And, and one of the things I, I know this is so nerdy. One of the things I love about back to school lessons is like slowly inserting like classroom procedures and like getting kids back on track and like all the reminders. And I think maybe the reason I like it is because like, I can insert all of these like rules and things that I know I've not already said it this year. <laughs> so I'm like, this is the first time and I don't have to worry about like feeling I'm repeating myself. I can use all my corny jokes about like why this works, or, you know, like all of those things I've saved up. I can do it for the first time. I know it's fresh for the kids and they're excited to be back. So I want to share about the lessons. Um, the way I'm currently lesson planning um, is a little bit different than maybe I have in the past because again, I'm not on a schedule where I'm seeing kids for 90 minutes or sorry for, I'm not seeing kids for 50 minutes five days in a row like I was last year. I'm seeing kids for 30 minutes at a time. I'm seeing them twice a week and I'm flip-flopping back and forth where I share classes with the PE teacher. Um, so my planning is a little different. Um, I realized after I like planned all these lessons, like sort of looking at last year's lessons as a guide, um, I planned all these lessons and then I had the first day and I was like, ooh, wow, I overplanned. You know, because I had forgotten like I'm... I, I was like, well, I know I'm going from like 50 minutes to 30 minutes, but like I can do a shorter version of that. No, I can't. And so, you know, to really do the lesson justice, um, it was taking uh, longer. And uh, so I, anyway, so now, but the nice thing is it's better to have more plans than not, especially if you're a new teacher. Plan more than you think you're going to need because <laughs> it, it, the worst feeling in the world is getting like 10 minutes away from the end of the lesson and like being out being out of con not knowing what you're going to go to next that's like the worst feeling um so anyway plan more so that's what i'm doing so um i've planned out and i'm going to share tonight i'm going to sort of just do a quick zoom through all my k through five lessons i'm going to share like lesson one and lesson two of the week so you're going to see my first 30 minute lesson and my second 30 minute lesson um, for K one, two, three, four, five. I hope to get through all of those by the time I'm done tonight. Um, usually in these videos, I do like a quick overview of all the lessons and then I do like a zoom in on one grade and give you more in depth. Um, and that's what I hope to start doing next week. But with all the like, you know, talking about stuff that you might want in your classroom now, it just, uh, I knew I wouldn't have the time for that. So I'm going to try and get through all those lessons and sort of share that like first lesson, second lesson. So you can see the progression a little bit. Um, and then, um, sort of see how I go through those. Okay, so I'm starting with kindergarten. Um, <clears throat> oh, 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 and, and one more thing. At my school, um, just to give you more context, we are singing. And the reason we're doing that is that um, we have masks and we are spaced apart and we have proper ventilation in our room. I even actually have an air purifier, which I know is awesome and I'm super blessed to have that. Um, but based on like the Colorado study of um, word um, particulates or what, uh, whatever the word, <laughs> I can't think of the word I've said a hundred thousand times this last year, aerosols. There's an <laughs> aerosol study. They said that if you have proper ventilation, like so many circulations of air per hour, and if you have uh, proper spacing, which I think they said three feet um, and you're masked, then it's safe to sing. So my school meets all those criteria. So our district is, decided that we are singing with masks. So that said, if you're like, man, he's doing a lot of songs. Is he sing yeah, I am sing <laughs> singing this year, so that's why you're hearing that. Um, okay, so kindergarten, let's start there. I love kinders after about six weeks into the school year. So these first lessons are real rough. <laughs> it's like kinders are hard because like they don't know how to sit, they don't know how to stand, they don't know how to raise their hand. One kid has to pee, they all have to pee. And the, I mean, it's like kinder the first <laughs> couple weeks is really rough. And I just have to remind myself that like by the time they get to Halloween, they're the best students I will ever have all year. But it's these first couple of weeks are real distressing. So, <laughs> so the first lesson, I always meet kids at the door. I, they, they're coming down the hall in their line. They've been working on their line. We come in in a nice line. I say, stay in your line. Stay in your line. Follow my line. We go in line and we make um, a super long line. It sort of has to wrap around the room a little bit. Um, and I say, uh, you know, oh my gosh, this reminds me of a shape of a... Gosh, is that an airplane? No. Is that a, a truck? No. Mm. Is it a go-kart? No. Mm. What would it be? A train, yes. And then I, there's this silly little choo-choo train song um, that might have come originally from the Orf Source, which is a book you can find online. There's like Orf Source, Orf Source 2. I'm trying to remember where it came from. 
Um, but there are a lot of versions of a choo-choo train song. This one goes, choo-choo train, choo-choo train, copy me and do the same. Choo-choo train, choo-choo train, woo, woo, stop. It's super fun, super simple. We go around the room. We do that song probably five or six or seven times this first day. And the, the, as we're doing it, I'm saying, oh my, after each stop, oh my gosh, wow, you're keeping your hands to yourself. You're doing great. I love it. Oh, and then next time, oh my gosh, wow, I see people are doing the action of the train moving while we're going. That's amazing. Good job. And the next time, oh wow, we're reaching up and pulling the train whistle. Fantastic. Because, oh, I love seeing how you're doing the actions and moving. Great work. You know, it's all like positive reinforcement, all trying to get them to like as I'm reinforcing and doing the song, I'm also hitting all these things. We're keeping our hands to ourselves. We're moving through the room. And this, this also, this circling around the room thing gives them a chance to like look at the room because they've never been there before or have for a short amount of time. So it's like giving them a chance to see. It's getting them a chance to listen to me. We're moving together. Um, and so we, we get through and we do that quite a few times. We do a little circle song I learned, I think from my friend Andrew Ellingson that goes, Come and make a circle, circle, circle. Come and make a circle all around. Take hands together, everyone together. Once we've made a circle, then we'll all sit down. And for kinders, this takes takes a little bit, a little bit of work. Um, if you're wondering where's that song, I think the melody is "Button You Must Wander." Wand. I th I think or a version of that. Kodai people help me out. But um, it's it's just a super easy song. It's just to get us in our circle. We're mostly already in a circle because we've been circling around like a choo-choo train and then we sit down together. Uh, we talk about crisscross applesauce. What does that look like? Maybe they've done that in their homeroom. Maybe they haven't. And so I always say crisscross applesauce, spoons in the bowl. Oh, or wait, you know, if we're if we're crisscross and crisscross, and I'm trying to be explicit, crisscross is when my legs you know, move like this and show them what that looks like. And then we talk about if you actually had applesauce in your lap, you'd need a spoon, right? And so we're pretending our hands are spoons and we put them in the bowl. I also like to use the same, um, I used to use the terminology of uh, pockets on the floor, which is like basically like saying bottoms on the floor, but it's another way to say that. Um, oh my gosh, thank you, <laughs> Instagram, for confirming. Yes, it's button, you must wander, okay. <laughs> um, so I like to use the word pockets on the floor instead of saying bottoms on the floor. I'm not having to say bottoms down or whatever. And I know that my kindergarten homeroom teachers also use that language. Um, if you're a new teacher in your building, go down to talk to your kindergarten teachers and say like, what sort of words do you use? What phrases do you use? Like, what catchphrase will get kids to like pay attention? Is it like a one, two, three, eyes on me? Do you do that? Do you do like class, class, yes, yeah, you know, like go, go and ask around and see if there are like common things that maybe your school uses so that you are keyed in to know what those things are. So um, crisscross applesauce and pockets on the ground, that has always been pretty helpful. And then we go into engine, engine number nine. And the version I use is engine, engine number nine, going down Chicago line, see it sparkle, see it shine, engine, engine number nine. I know that's not the same version everyone uses. Use your own version if you want. I think I learned this one from Jill Trinka years ago at a state conference. And I like it, I'm used to it, so that's the version I'm using. Uh, we have some silly little finger um, Peter the rabbit shows up. Um, Peter is my puppet. My This is a Folk Manus puppet, that's the brand. And I think that this one is called a Dutch rabbit. There, If you go looking for it, I have a whole, page on my, I, on Amazon, I have a, a whole list of uh, puppets that you might be interested in. This one is the full size Dutch rabbit. There's also like a Dutch rabbit baby that's like this big, <laughs> not quite as big. Um, I would spring for the big one. It's worth it. Anyway, Peter comes around and Peter introduces himself. Hello everyone. I am Peter and I live outside in the bushes and well, sometimes I come inside the classroom and Peter talks to the kids um, and then event. So this is just a, another way to like try and like get their attention and get them excited about music. You know, like, oh my gosh, there's a puppet. How excited, you know, like it's just another way to like get them hooked in. Cause on the first day, it's like, you want to sing some songs, you want to teach some procedures, you want to get them interested and then you want them out of your room, right? Especially kindergarten. And so this is uh, another thing that just like gets them excited. Um, Peter teaches them a little poem um, that goes, I saw a little rabbit go hop, hop, hop. I saw his little ears go flop, flop, flop. I saw his little nose go wink, wink, wink. 
I saw his little eyes go blink, blink, blink. I said, Mr. Rabbit, won't you stay? He looked at me and hopped away. That's, that's me like showing you the whole thing, right? That's not how I teach it to kids. I would probably have Peter teach it once, say it once, and then say, you know, like, let's try each line or let, you know, depending on the class, depending on what we're doing, you could also do it as a finger play. And that's what I have kids do, um, where Peter's going to teach the kids the poem. And then Peter says something like, okay, everyone, get your rabbits out. And I'm like, Peter, they don't have rabbits. And he's like, oh, sure they do. Hold up two fingers. Look, you've got, look, you got ears. And you got uh, a nose and you got the head. And so like the kids learn that they can do this um, as a finger play and then they can do hop, hop, hop. I saw his little ears go flop, flop, flop. It's, a, it's just a fun little song they can do or a little poem they can do. And usually by that time, we're out of time. Oh no. And so we talk about like, okay, depending on um, which class it is, one class might be going to the door to go straight into the gym because I have a door from my room right into the gym. Or if it's the end of the hour, they might be getting picked up by their teacher. So like if I got this class at the beginning of the hour from their teacher, they're going to go to the gym. If they came to me from the gym, they're going to go back to their teacher. So I always have to like at the end of my class, like get them lined up, get them ready to go and know which way they're going. Um, I try and introduce my goodbye song and then we're done for the day. Lesson two, they come back. It is very similar to <laughs> In one we do choo-choo train we do our circle song we sit crisscross applesauce we do engine engine number nine um then they get their like dot spots their singing spots is what i'm calling them which is where like their spaced out spots all around the room i have little sit spots on the floor with their classroom number on it they go sit there um i use my idokio app and i take their pictures so i can put them in the seating chart and sort of know who is who um and then if we have time, Peter comes out and we do, I saw a little rabbit go hop, hop, hop one more time. And each, each time with each of these lessons that we've already done, like we've, I've already introduced them, I'm, I just know that like they're going to need more time with it. Because like even though we've like done them, it was on their first day, and they're, they probably remember zero to zero of what I said. Like they remember me, maybe, and they might <laughs> remember Peter, but they probably don't remember much of the lesson. Um, and so it's just reinforcing, renewing, reminding, and getting them excited. So like one of the things I might do for engine, engine number nine, um, to like be silly, to but like as a rehash of that lesson, I might do engine, engine number three, going down. And then they're like, no, 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 Mr. Rao, it's not, it's not three. Oh, wh what number is it? Nine. Oh, engine, engine, number nine, going down. Oh, wait, am I not showing nine fingers? Oh, I'm only showing five? Okay, hold on. Let me... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now do I have it? Great. Engine, engine, number nine, going down the New York line. See, it, wait, what? Did I say that wrong? And so it's just like silly things like that that get the kids to, if they do remember, to re-engage that memory and to like think like, they're correcting me. They do remember how it goes. They're trying it with me. And they think that's hilarious that I've gotten it wrong. And they also are like, there to help. Right? So this is a, a lesson set that is very similar to the first one, but it's just like little extensions of each thing. And again, I'm adding more, like trying to add in more like, and here's how we sit. And oh my gosh, you're doing a great job. And I got to give a sticker to this kid because they're saying the words. Good work. Oh, wow. Your finger. I love it. Great. We're doing the finger practice. Fantastic. You know, it's a lot of reinforcement. It's a lot of like reminding how, how to do what we need to do and then moving on. Oh, sorry, Matt. Okay. Let me know if I cut out completely and I will try something new. <laughs> okay. So, um, let's see. Let me actually try. This is a new microphone. So we're, we're trying, we're trying to see if it works. Ooh. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Hope so. Ooh, don't know. Anyway, okay. We're trying. We're trying. We'll see how this goes. Um, like I said, it's a new microphone. I'm trying to be fancy and make it sound good, but who knows? Okay. Thanks, Matt, for saying that in the comments. Okay, first grade. It seems a uh, it's a very similar set of lessons. They come in. We follow the circle. Uh, we do our circle song. Um, we do a song from Game Plan um, called "Welcome Back to School." Um, I see a lot of great comments about mic, mic issues. If I cut out more, please let me know or give me like a big X sign or something. I don't know. I can't, 
I can't tell in the moment. I'm just hoping it's working. Um, so the kids come in, we do our circle song. Um, we do a song from Game Plan that goes, welcome back to school, welcome back to school. If you have Game Plan, it's a fun little song. Um, but it's just really simple, sort of has kids do some clapping and patting and things along with it. Um, I uh, do a magic word uh, game with the kids where we keep the beat. So um, they have to keep the beat somewhere. So maybe they keep it on their knees. Um, we practice keeping the beat clapping, we keep it on our shoulders, you know, just wherever you want to keep the beat right, pat it on the floor, whatever. And then we play the magic word game that we're like, we come up with a magic word, maybe the magic word is like um, apple or chair or whatever, or some of my class are always choosing potato. I don't know why they're choosing potato, but a lot are choosing potato. And so the way it works is you have to keep the beat and you, I'm going to switch the teacher, I'm going to switch. Maybe I switch from patting to clapping. You can't switch until I say the magic word. So if we're patting all together and I change to clapping, you can't change to clapping until I say potato. Potato. Like you can't switch until I switch, which they think is funny and infuriates them and they love it. So um, it's basically like, are you watching? Are you paying attention? And also like you got to listen for the keyword. And then we do a little version of Little Bunny Foo Foo. Um, the first time I teach it, I teach it with props. And I have um, a little Beanie Baby version of Foo Foo. Um, I have a little squishy thing for the goon at the end. And then I have this amazing new magic wand I'm very excited about. Um, ah, it's very fun. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but um, it lights up. Oh, you probably can't see that. Um, it's sort of pink now, and then I switch it, and it goes, like, blue. Anyway, this was in a teacher cast-off pile. Like, at the beginning of the year, you know, teachers are like, I got a pile of stuff outside my room, and come take it, or it's going to the dumpster, right? So, like, this was the one of the things I found. All I had to do was change the batteries. Um, super cool. I don't have a link for this one, because it says, like, it says, like, uh, Disney Store London. So... <laughs> Sorry, but anyway, it's super fun, and we use it for little bunny foo foo, and the kids are like, "That's not actually magic," and I'm like, "You come back to me when you can do real magic, and we'll talk." Because how do you know? So no, I don't say that, but um, I do. I'm like, "Oh, it might actually be magic. Who knows?" Anyway, it's a fun little thing. We do little bunny foo foo, and then again, we do the finger play version of it because you can do, you know, little bunny foo foo hopping through the forest. There's so many songs where you can do a version of the actions with your fingers in what we call a finger play, and so that's what we do for little bunny foo foo. Um, we do it maybe a couple times, and then we're done. Easy peasy end of the day. The second time they come in, we do our circle song again. Same one I sang for kindergarten. They're used to it. Um, the one thing that changes for first or second or third or fourth grade is that at the end of the song goes, once we've made a circle, then we'll all sit down. And I say, okay, I'm not gonna tell you we made the circle, so it's time. So instead I just say, you all are very smart. When you know, when we've all made the circle and we're at the end of the song, you get a seat yourself. So watch, make sure everyone's in the circle. If there's a kid standing over there, not a part of the circle, we gotta make sure they're part of the circle. But if you get to the end of the song and um, everyone's a part of the circle, then you can sit yourself down. And they love that. So we come in, we do the circle song. <clears throat> I teach them, be, be, bumble, be, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I say you are out. That's probably another, again, a different version, slightly different version from maybe the one you know. Of course, I'm using puppets. And yes, I do have a puppet pig, right? Uh, in the poem, as I'm teaching the poem, I say, oh, there's a, you know, I have a tomato patch up behind my house. There are bees all summer flying around. It's so great. We talk about bees. Bees are good creatures. We like them. Why do we like them? What do they do? Um, and then I say, but the one bee, oh no. It flew down onto my knee because I'm the man in the story, you know, stung a man upon his knee. That's me, unfortunately. Anyway, so I get stung on my knee and I go, ouch! And then the, the pig goes, <laughs> funny because you got stung. Anyway, so the pig has some commentary, but then the pig gets to be part of the poem and he gets stung on the snout. And we talk about snouts and what that means. Anytime I try and introduce a song or a poem or something with uh, vocabulary, I always try and make sure the kids know what the vocabulary means. This is a great example. Stung a pig upon his snout. What's a snout? Let's use our context clues. Ah. You know, so we, we, that's why I love having an actual animal. I know, I know it's a puppet, it's not actually an animal, but like having a representation which helps kids 
especially English language learners, like get some of those connections and understand some of those things. So having the puppet I think is super duper helpful and then the B is, is super fun. So once we learn the poem um, and we've learned it with the puppet, we've learned all the actions, then we add a little game where kids are sitting in a circle and the bee flies around. B B bumble B it it taps each kid on the head as it as it goes around. The kids are standing up in a in a big circle and then at the end Stung a pig upon his snout. I say you are out. Bzz, 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 bzz. And four kids get stung, buzzed. I don't say buzzed. I, try. I always like, I'm like, oh, buzzed is nicer than stung. And then I'm like, I shouldn't be saying kids are getting buzzed in my class. Um, anyway, so <laughs> kids, uh, I know you can do it where you like just sting one kid at a time, but I got big classes and that would take me forever to do. So instead of doing I say you are out, and that one kid is out. I say you are out, bzz, 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 and it gets four kids at a time. That means that I get through my class in about four or five rotations, hopefully, um, and then we can move on. I know I've shared about B, B, Bumblebee before. Last year I showed about an adaptation you could use with like clip art on the board. If you um, aren't able to be in a circle, you aren't able to do some of that. So if you want that lesson, check back to last year's lessons and you'll get another version of that. Then again, same with all, all the grades, I'm going to say this. We go to our dot spots, our singing spots, which is like their seating chart spot in the classroom. I take their picture. I make sure they know their spot just again for, um, for setting up the seating chart set in my room for, in iDokio. Uh, Sandra just asked, what do the kids do when they're out? Um, so the kids, when they're out, bzz, 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 they sit down and scoot back. Everyone else... Um, they stay in their circle and I go around again. And if the kids are out, then they can pat the beat on their knees. They could, some kids just can't do that and watch at the same time and process everything. So they'll just say the poem, but they're still active. So they can either stay and pat, they can say the poem, but they're doing something. Okay, so we do our dot spots. We take a picture for Idokio and then we do little bunny foo-foo if we have time. It depends on how long the BB Bumblebee game goes. I think I'm only gonna get through second grade. I'm gonna keep going, we're gonna see how we do. Um, second grade, the kids come in, we follow the circle, we do the circle song, uh, and then we sit down and I say, I have a very serious song to teach you this year. We're gonna start with a serious song in music this year, and it goes like this. A ram, Sam, Sam, a ram, Sam, Sam, gooly, 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 ram, Sam, Sam, a ram, Sam, Sam, a ram, Sam, Sam, gooly, 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 ram, Sam, Sam, a rafik, a rafik, gooly, 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 ram, Sam, Sam, a rafik, a rafik, gooly, 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 ram. Sam, Sam, Sam. And that's our serious song, right? And then I say, was that song as serious as I said it was? And they're like, no, it is silly. It has silly words. Yes, you're right. It's okay to be a little silly. Um, and so, yes, so it's a little bit silly. But then it gets even better. I teach kids, really there are only three parts, right? There's the Ram, Sam, Sam, the Ghoulie, Ghoulie, Ghoulies, and the Rafik. I've done this a couple times before I try and identify that with them. So um, then we learn each part separately. Ram, Sam, Sam, Ram, Sam, Sam, Gooly, 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 Rafik. I find that when I sing it for them once, maybe sing it for them a couple times, and then if I introduce the actions first, spoken with spoken words, and then I introduce each part singing, so I say, like, here's the Ram, Sam, Sam, Ram, Sam, Sam. Here's Gooly, Gooly, Gooly. Here's Rafik, right? And then I would say, like, hey, no, I'm going to sing the Ram, Sam, Sam, and you sing back. And then do it sort of that way. I, I don't want kids to know so much it's like, it's the phrases or what. Like, I'm more interested in them knowing that, like, here's one little unit. The Ram, Sam, Sam is one thing. The Ghouly Ghoulies is a different thing. The Rafik is a different thing. Because eventually we're going to eliminate parts of the song based on the words. So... I would rather them know that there's like this little tidbit of sound, this little tidbit of sound, instead of like, here's the first long phrase, if that makes sense. Because eventually, like, we might take out the gooly goos and it'll go, a oh, ram, Sam, Sam, a oh, ram, Sam, Sam. 
Ram, Sam, Sam, you know, so I take that out. So eventually um, I want them to be able to do that, which is why I sort of say like, there are really only three parts to the song, Ghoulie Ghoulies, Ram, Sam, Sam, and Rafik. So anyway, we go through that um, and it's a super fun little song for them to do. Eventually uh, in this lesson, we take out like one part. We'll take out the Ram, Sam, Sam, or we'll take out the Rafik, or we'll take out the Ghoulie Ghoulie. And we just think that in our head, we audiate that part and we don't sing it out loud. And then in the, in the next lesson, you're going to see we, we'll, it'll be cumulative. But in this first lesson, we just take out one, and then we put it in. We take out something else, we, we put it back in. We take it so, so the kids get the option of, of doing that. There's a song um, that we move on to um, uh, from Greg and Steve on their album Kids in Motion, which is a super fun um, CD. Probably you have it. You probably have it. You, um, it's, I remember when I student taught um, years ago, uh, that my cooperating teacher was like, I got this one on CD and on record. <laughs> cool, it's a super old song. Um, so you probably have Kids in Motion, it's worth getting. You can also buy it on iTunes. It's maybe also on Spotify. But there's a song called The Freeze. And what I do with kids with The Freeze, I give them a scarf and I say, you can move the scarf however you want. Oh, you know, but when, when you do it, then when you hear the sound stop, you have to freeze, right? So whatever position you're in, you have to stop and freeze, right? So um, we, we do the freeze song, and this is another teaching thing. So they can be on their dot spots and do it, um, or you can have them say, find a personal space in the room. Um, you can have them move through the room. It's whatever you want them to do. I personally, in this lesson, I said, find a good personal space so that as you move around the, you know, with your scarf, that you're not touching anyone else or anything. And so this is sort of a lesson on personal spaces and whatever, as much as it is listening and moving to the music. The song's only like two or three minutes long. It's super fun. Kids love it. They like being able to, to listen and move. And you could make it a, an elimination game if you wanted to. Usually eventually in the year we do that, but not in this first lesson. Um, and then if we have time after the freeze song, um, usually, well, we'll have enough time that I can sing my goodbye song, get them lined up, have them sort of know um, what comes next. And then in my second lesson of the week, we do Ram Sam Sam again, only this time it's cumulative. So like we sing Ram Sam Sam, we remember how it goes, we remember all the actions. And then like in the last lesson, we'd said like, which one, which part do you want to take out? Do you want to take out part of uh, the song? Well, let's take out the Ram Sam, or let's take out the Ghouly Ghoulies. Cool. So you do, you know, Ram Sam Sam, uh, Ram Sam Sam. Ram, Sam, Sam, uh, Ram, Sam, Sam. And the last lesson, we would put the, you know, Ghoulie Ghoulies in, and we maybe take out the Rafik. Well, this time, we're going to say, well, what do you want to take out next? And say, let's take out the Rafik. Great. No Rafik and no Ghoulie Ghoulies. So then, by the end of the song, you're going... And you're not singing anything out loud. You're audiating everything, which means like you're hearing it in your head, but not singing it out loud. Um, and so it's it's a process of getting kids to take things out. It's a cumulative process. So it's it's super fun. They like it and they feel like it's a big challenge. I always love doing this one. This is the first lesson in second grade or the first couple lessons because they like think it's sort of challenging. Um, but it's not, but it's just fun and they have a good time with it. And also they're excited. And also they love that we're starting with the, the year um, we're starting the year with uh, a silly song. After that, we go to our seating chart spots. I take pictures. I put them in. Um, I put them in the um, the seating chart, and then we do a name game. Um, I see someone comment on Facebook. Do you have name game songs that you love to use? I've actually done a couple videos about this in the past. So if you go to makemomentsmatter.org and then click the video tab, um, in the previous Musical Mondays videos, like my first video of every year, this is the fourth year I've done these videos, these weekly videos. Other videos have lots of name games and things in there. So if you want to go back, you can. But I want to share one more <clears throat> that. Um, I had done years ago or a version of years ago, but um, I apprenticed um, ORF level one this summer in Dallas and we did it in my level one class. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes, remember, this is a great. So um, it's one that I'm doing with actually a couple different grades, trying it out in different versions. Um, it's just a simple poem and it goes, uh, we're going on a picnic, a picnic, a picnic. We're going on a picnic, a picnic at the park. And then we talk about like, well, if you're going to go on a picnic, what would you take on a picnic? Well, you could take sandwiches, you could take lemonade, you could take 
um, a frisbee, you could take a kite, you could take a radio. There are all sorts of things you could take. And I go around and have kids give me examples of things that maybe they would want to take um, if they were going on a picnic. And then I say, okay, great, let's do the poem again. And we're going on a picnic, a picnic, a picnic. We're going on a picnic, a picnic at the park. Now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to bring on the picnic. My name's Mr. Rao, and I'm bringing, and this is where it gets tricky, because what I bring to the picnic has to start with the same letter as my name. So my name's Mr. Rao, 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 Rao starts with an R, and so I could bring mm, radishes, or ravioli, or uh, rollos, or a radio, or a rutabaga. And so this is what you do with this lesson is that you, the kids get to say like what they're going to bring has to match their name, right? So some kids, for younger kids, that's not as easy. Older kids are like, bam, got it. On it. I know what I'm going to bring. At younger kids, I usually say like, I'm going to give you a minute. And in that minute, I want you to think, well, first, you need to know two things. First, you need to know your name. So I hope you know that. If you don't know that, we're in real trouble. But you got to know your name. And the second thing, um, you need to think of a thing that, that starts with the same letter as your name so like you so but here's the thing if you can't think of anything friends you got a whole minute so think and you can bring food or you could bring something else you might take to a park if you can't think of anything turn to the person next to you and say oh my gosh i need help i can't think of it because some kids like chris chris can bring cookies or cake or chocolate cake or chocolate chip cookies or cucumber or uh crackers or i mean c is easy but if your name is like Xavier, you might need some help. And so you can turn it and talk to the person next to you. And I always give kids a chance to do that. And then if there are particularly tricky names, like I have a couple kids whose names start with X or um, what was the other one? There was another one that seemed more common, but was really hard to find foods for. Um, so uh, I'll go and help them if I need to. But some kids just draw a blank. They get nervous. But um, you got to think about what you're going to bring. So then you do the poem, and then you're like, my name is Mr. Rao, and I'm bringing radishes. Then everyone says, Rao's bringing radishes. And the next kid, my name is Darren, and I'm bringing donuts. Darren's bringing donuts. My name's Jamari, and I'm bringing, I did not think of a word, thing that would start with a J, rats, because uh, I didn't think of <laughs> to this example. Uh, so then he would say what he's bringing. So I, I, then we do four. And once you get to the end of four, I go, ding, 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 four kids, great. Let's go back. So we'd say, like, Bethany's bringing bonbons, Jamari's bringing jambalaya, Chris is bringing cake, and Rao's bringing ranch. Oh, why did I say ranch? That's such a good one. Anyway, and then we do, we're going on a picnic, a picnic. So then we can go around the whole room, and once we get to all the way through, I do in sets of four, so it's a little bit easier to remember. Once we get to the very end, I say, boom, 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 we made it all the way in. Now we're going to go all the way back around the circle. And I go and stand above each kid and say, Jamari's bringing juice, and Rachel's bringing, you know, like we go through whatever. Um, oh, Dallas is bringing, I don't know, whatever. And so each kid gets to, you get to remember it one more time, all the way back around the circle. And then we do our goodbye song, we line up, and we head out. And I'm out of time. So <laughs> I'm going to save um, my lessons for next time for three, four, five, or maybe I'll just jump ahead or start with those next time. I'm not sure. Um, so that we can get through more. This is my first time back in a new sort of setting, so I'm still figuring out how uh, to talk about all of these, but I hope that this was like a, 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 enough content so you're like seeing all the content, maybe how it works together. Maybe you just want like a quick rundown, like we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. If you leave comments and sort of let me know like this was helpful or I love more of this uh, thing or whatever, that lets me know like uh, what I can do better and, and what could be more helpful. Um, one more quick refresher. If you if you heard me talk about any of the resources that I've talked about or uh, the lessons you want to know more, there's a links page on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org slash video. It's also on the bottom of the caption for both Instagram and uh, Facebook. So you can go right to that um, to get all those links and things. If you have a question, feel free to reach out to me. My email is makemomentsmatter at gmail.com or you can message me through Instagram or Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm happy to try and help. Um, I'm going to be back next Monday for more lessons and ideas. 
Um, and also, uh, this is going to be made into a podcast. So if you're like, I can't sit and listen to this or watch a video, you can listen to me on a podcast if you want, a podcast version if you, you know, driving to school or back. But I'm going to be back next week. Thanks, everyone, for joining me tonight. I hope this was helpful. And like I said, if you have comments about, oh, the mic didn't work or this was, you know, or faster or whatever, please let me know. Um, that's very, very helpful to me. All right, everyone, have a great night. I hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Facebook Live, for sticking around. Thanks for trying this new format. I hope it was helpful. See you next time.